Hello everyone, welcome to our history and philosophy of early childhood development presentation under the theme, Evolution of Early Childhood Care and Education. Our e-tutor is Miss Margaret McKenzie. We are group four and we will be presenting in the following order. Yours truly, Chantal Kugel James, Andrea Jeffrey, Dedrica Johnson, Camille Lewis Mullings, and Nikisha Samuels. Now, follow back away as we take you on this journey. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. In 1934, the first private nursery school was opened in Trinidad and Tobago. However, this was being offered by unqualified providers in private settings that did not follow any standard regulations. Therefore, there was a need to formalize this initiative. As we all know, early childhood education is of utmost importance. So in the 1960s, the government of Trinidad and Tobago responded to the need for an early childhood education system and hence the formalization of a systematic approach to early childhood care and education. After this decision, the government created a preschool unit which established community centers as multi-purpose facilities to serve the comprehensive needs of the communities. These centers offered a range of cultural and educational activities as well as skills training for all free of charge. There were now policies and regulations in place for the early childhood education centers in Trinidad and Tobago. And teachers were now trained and provided with the necessary resources to further deliver in the classroom. After the formalization in 1960, the government of Trinidad and Tobago started their first two pilot nursery schools in La Pastora and San Fernando, which was of great success, which led to the infrastructure of many others. And to date, early childhood education centers have been doing extremely well in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago is a small cared island that is located southward of the Caribbean. Until their country's independence in the year 1962, they were colonized and put under the Spanish and French government. At present, they are under the British democracy system, educational system 2011. The Trinidad and Tobago educational system believes that to educate children three to five years of age is not obligatory. Therefore, schools were built and designed for disadvantaged and disabled children only. On the other hand, parents were concerned about not having their children fully equipped for the primary level of their education. As such, the government saw the need to build two learning centers in the year 2009 equipped with the required materials for learning. Hence, students three and four years of age were later enrolled into them, and they were designed to cater to their educational needs, free of cost. According to the Ministry of Education, the students' population rapidly increased in the year 2011 to 254,621 with students ages 2 to 4 years, which occupy daycare learning centers and pre-primary institutions. As such, there was a great improvement in the early childhood educational system, such as grants were given to school to help impoverished children and training slash scholarship were awarded to 350 prospective early childhood practitioners. In light of this great inception, a plan was designed by the government who now thought it was purposeful for every child to learn, starting at the earliest possible opportunity. 
Therefore, it became necessary for an extensive parent and guardian outreach program where plans were made and training done to help parents in healthy practices that will be beneficial at home as well as throughout their children's lifetime. Thornhill 2014 The major achievements of ECCE in Trinidad and Tobago since 2012 to present are 54 ECCE centers were constructed. In total, there are 209 ECC centers. In 2014 and 2015 respectively, the launch of the public-private enterprise was done. Also, the achievement professional development training is done annually. According to Education 2030 framework, the government is working towards all students having access to quality care and education by setting learning opportunities at all levels of the education system. Jerome Brunner's theory mainly focused on the cognitive aspects of development, while the Yuri Bronfern Brunner's ecological system theory mainly focused on the environment and how the environment impacts learning, whether negatively or positively. The Bronfern Brunner's theory, we can take teaching at a different approach as it relates to the environment. Now that we know that the environment can impact the child negatively, we want to ensure as educators that we are teaching in an environment that is susceptible to learning and an environment that a child is fully comfortable in. Now with the burner theory, we can allow children to create new experiences and also use past experiences as a way of learning. Now, because this is a hands-on approach method of learning, teaching can be simplified. Now, the use of real life situations will allow children to relate and to also understand the content that you're bringing forward much better. Collaboration between parents, the community, and other stakeholders are vital to the growth and development of young children. This kind of partnership helps to maximize children's potential, build a better community, and have satisfied parents and schools. Parents' Benefits It is cost-effective. Parents received respect and high expectances from teachers they work with Parents will increase self-assurance assisting their children and parental involvement will encourage the parent to further or start their own studies. Community benefits. It improves morale of the teacher. It improves parental involvement, enhances family support. It can be used to host other events and attracts more investors. Other stakeholders benefits the students it helps them to learn to tackle challenges it promotes good self-esteem it builds knowledge while learning about themselves and supports the foundation of the child's life in a positive way jamaica is presently promoting and investing in early childhood care and education in the 2019 to 2020 budget, education received the largest share compared to other vital ministries. $117 billion was allocated to education. Infrastructure, staff training, curriculum, and policies are areas in which the country has major development. Infrastructure. In 2017, the Ministry of Education allocated $38.6 million for the upgrade of 24 early childhood institutions. In addition to that, 13 early childhood institutions were constructed on 13 primary schools. 
all these are evidence to show that Jamaica is still promoting and investing in early childhood care and education.